Hey everybody. Today we're making beautiful scatter plots with regression lines in R using the ggplot function. I'm going to be looking at the penguins data set that's included in the model data package, which I've already loaded up. I've also loaded up tidyverse as I usually do at the start of my exploratory analyses. The penguins data set includes 344 observations, each one's a penguin, and there's three different kinds of penguins represented here, and they're from three different islands. I'm going to be interested in the data question of, is bill length mm potentially explainable, is it related, to flipper length mm? So we've got two quantitative variables, a scatter plot's appropriate, maybe even some regression lines will be appropriate. So let's get that basic scatter plot. We'll use ggplot, that's our workhorse graphing function in R. First we have to specify the name of the data set we're using, that's penguins. Then, inside the aesthetics argument, we need to say which variables in that set we're using and how we want them displayed. In this case, on the x-axis, I want flipper length, so flipper length mm. On the y-axis, I want that response variable, that's going to be bill length mm. And then finally, I need to add a layer to my plot specifying how these variables should actually be represented. Um, what sort of geometry should be used. And in this case, for a scatter plot, I want geom point. So uh, let's go see what that looks like. All right, so we get a pretty basic scatter plot here. There's a warning message that two observations have been removed because of missing data. In a perfect world, I would go in and look and see what's actually going on there. It's only two observations out of 344 in a short video, so I'm going to skip right over that. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this, see how it looks. Okay, so there's kind of a vaguely linear shape as we go up, not perfect, but uh, it's reasonable to put on a regression line here. Notice that flipper length is on the x-axis, bill length is on the y-axis, just as we said with our aesthetics. The labels aren't ideal, neither is the gray panel background. At the end of this vid, I'll go back and fix all of that. For the moment, I'm just gonna live with it. So. Let's put um, a smoother on here. We're adding a layer to the plot. The syntax literally is a plus sign. The um, syntax we use to add a smoother is geom smooth. I'll start by doing that with any, without any arguments. The default smoother for ggplot is a low S curve. That's sort of a rolling polynomial fit. Um, that can be a little bit complicated for some, purpose, for some purposes. It's a little bit less easy to understand that model just as you glance at it. And it can be overly complicated for some purposes, as we'll see a little bit later in this video. So I want to make this into just a straight regression line. While I'm at it, I'm also going to remove this gray error ribbon. That can be a little busy, and uh, it's not quite as relevant if we're um, not doing statistical inference or not focused on an inferential analysis. So in order to make these, this regression line, we want method equals LM for linear, linear model. And to remove the error ribbon, it's SE equals false. OK, great. So obviously, this is not a perfect linear fit. You can see that um, the data tends to be below the regression line on the left and right and above it in the middle. So if we were to do a residual plot on this, it would not look perfect. In a little bit, we're going to go and improve this model. Before I do that, I want to do a couple smaller things. First of all, let's change a couple of the characteristics of this plot. For instance, um, we can make these points larger. How about uh, size equals 2? We can uh, make them red if we want. Oops, shouldn't be capitalized. There we go. Um, what else do we want to do with this? We could make them rectangular. Well, let's make them squares. I'm not sure we could actually make them rectangular. All right. And uh, the last thing we might want to do is make them semi-transparent with alpha. So let's make them 50% transparent. Uh, comma. <laughs> there we go. All right. We could also mess with the... Um, characteristics of the regression line here. So for instance, we could make this smoother. I don't know. How about, uh, let's make it pink. Pink's probably not the best color on that. It's just pretty low visibility. I'm just making up these colors and so on as I go along. So uh, not ideal color choices. 
It's a cautionary tale about making uh, color choices as a non-graphic designer or as someone without particular experience in, uh, in data visualization for communication, as opposed to just exploratory analysis. Okay, so uh, let's go back to our, our basic um, scatter plot right now. So my geom point with just regular old black points on that gray panel with our regular size. We have this regression line. I guess I should put that in too. There we go. I think before I do anything else, I just want to really quickly get the equation for that regression line. Let's have uh, 30 seconds of algebra. So the command we're using there is linear model. We got to put the y value that we're using, the variable for the y value. It's bill length mm. And then we say that's related to the x value or explained by the x value. Flip, oh brother, flipper length mm. And then we have to say what our what data set we should be looking at. And it should be penguins. And I'll just print this out to get the equation. We've got the coefficient of the intercept and then the slope of that regression line, 0.2544. So for every unit of uh, additional flipper length a penguin has, on average, you expect to have 0.25 extra units of bill length. Um, we could do a lot more, of course, with this linear model. Save it as a variable, get the summary, do re residual plots and everything. I'm not going to do that right now. What I'd like to do instead is to investigate the fact, and I think right now I'll take off the smoother, that we seem to have some groups in this plot. Um, it's not so much that the graph has a curve, but more that there's just three groups, kind of in here, in here, and over here. And that's not too surprising given that we've got three different kinds of penguins in this set corresponding to three different islands. So approaching this set for the first time, I don't know which of those variables corresponds to the groups that I seem to be seeing this in the scatter plot or really even if either of them do. So as a first try, I'm going to uh, try the island variable in this data set. You can see that we have different islands. And I'm just going to color the different points by island. So let's add in a color aesthetic. What's going to happen now is R is going to go through this data set. And for every row in the data set, it's going to plot a different point with an the x-axis or with the x value and the y value listed on the x-axis and y-axis, the flipper length on the x and the bill length on the y. And then for each one of those points, it's going to color the, um, the point on the scatter plot differently depending on which island the thing is from. And you can see that here zoomed in. It's also added a legend for us so that we can tell that the pinkish, peachish, orangish points are corresponding to the island of Bisco. Okay, so um, this isn't my favorite color palette in the world. The default color palette for R um, doesn't have the greatest contrast, and, and in particular, it bothers me that it's not especially colorblind friendly. So the very first thing I'm going to do is to put on a different um, color palette with scale color brewer. And in this case, the word color, oops, there, is corresponding to the color aesthetic. If it were a fill aesthetic, it would be scale fill brewer, for instance. And then inside, I have to specify what palette I want. And a decent one is dark two, not paletter, palette. There we go. So that's a little higher contrast, and it's a bit more colorblind friendly. The Juju plot is now updated both in terms of the plot itself and the legend. Okay, so, um, you know, you can see a little bit of separation in a couple of these groups. The bottom left one here, though, is still all mixed up. And that's indicating to me that maybe this isn't the variable that's really separating those three groups that I thought I was observing in the original data set. Um, maybe it's the actual penguins species. So the species of penguins here. So I'll just copy and paste, and I'll change my color aesthetic to, to species see if that looks any better. Okay, so now species is in my legend, and the three groups for the three penguins are pretty clear. Now, there was a real relationship between the 
two categorical variables that we just looked at, species and island. And that's apparent if we use the table command. So let's do that really quickly. Penguins dollar species and penguins, penguins dollar island. All right. And so here you can see that in these three islands, there's um, some real separation, although not complete separation between the three species. Gen 2s are only found on the island of Bisco. The Torgensen Island only includes a dailies. Um, while, oh, I guess chin straps are only found on dreams. But there's uh, also some confusion in here. Bisco includes two different species. A dailies are found in two different places. So that explains why the three groups here in our plot are a little bit more mixed up when we, um, when we go to color by the island variable, but still have some separation, even though it's really the species variable that's distinguishing um, these different groups. Okay, so uh, let's see here. We got a regression line for the overall plot here, if you remember. Now that we have the species split off in this nice way, I'd like to add a separate regression line for each group. And that's actually really easy to do. Once you add this color aesthetic to your plot, um, that is going to be preserved if we add another layer. So if we put in this exact same um, smoother that we had before, the Geom Smooth, into this command that we have now with the color aesthetic, the Geom Point, and the Scale Color Brewer with Palette Dark 2, it's literally going to add in those regression lines just the way we like. So you can see here, we've got a pretty linear relationship within each of these three groups. Now by default, the, um, the Geome Smooth with the model LM is going to allow for a different slope for each of these three groups. In other words, the linear model that's being used here potentially allows for interaction between the species variable and the flipper length MM variable. I have a whole video on um, linear modeling with interaction. I'll throw a link up top. All right, so um, this is great. I think the, um, the only thing that's really left here is to slightly improve the, the appearance of this scatter plot. So I think I'm just gonna copy and paste this whole thing. I'm pretty happy with my plot overall. I wanna change my labels. So on the x-axis, I don't need the, the underscores. I don't need the MM. Let's go ahead and capitalize flipper, but maybe I won't capitalize length. On the y-axis, I'll do something similar. How about bill length? And um, I should also change my um, <laughs> legend title. So that's just another label for a different aesthetic. So I can just put that right in with my labs command. It's, that legend is corresponding to my color aesthetic. So I can just specify that here. And let's just capitalize species. So that looks a little better. Let's go ahead and put a main title on it. How about uh, penguin measurements? We could also add a caption. I don't think I'll bother with that right now. Uh, if we look at the help file for penguins, by the way, you can get some uh, some credits for this. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble focusing here at the end of this vid. Um, we'd want to cite Allison Horst, as well as Gorman Williams and Frazier that actually put out the paper that, ga that where they gathered this data. So, um, you know, cite your sources. All right, so this plot is starting to come together. I think the last thing that I want to do on this is to remove the gray panel background. So I think I want to do a theme, a theme minimal on that. <laughs> there it is. Okay, that's getting to be about like what I want. I have a decent looking plot with good uh, um, axis labels. Ooh. I just noticed my legend didn't come out right here. Sorry, let me capitalize species like I said I would. There we go. Okay, now I have good labels, both for my X, Y, and my X and Y axis, as well as my legend. My title's looking good, my color palette's okay, I've got the white background, and I've got a separate regression line for each one of these groups.